Read some poems. The first one called the first one is called Van Gogh. A winter solstice night. The window framed sun sinks into ash pink clouds cluttered by a dead oak stoking the fireplace heavens. The window, ticked by ice, freezes. Another sun, reflected within the frame, sets across the pane. Through a thick blue sky, slashed with the strong hands and patience of a crazed surgeon. Liquid wax hardens on the sill. Van Gogh was a good teacher but I blew out the flame, his sun. The orange smoke slithering center hisses between my fingertips. The window blows inside. Glass bits twist my sleepless eyes. The empty frame is flooded by a pure as birth light inside the shine. The demon's final dictation, only the godless with no interest in worldly success escape crucifixion. Thank you. phone and a dead friend. After the memorial, you could still laugh, smiling, beautiful, toss of hair from your eyes, glistening blue. I want to fall asleep being held by you and wake up warm, my arm on your hip beneath blankets my ear against your breast, hearing the rise and fall of your chest and the beat of your heart, certain you are alive only now. Thanks. <clears throat> this is called New Orleans. <clears throat> Where the depths of the spirit world mixes with the distinctions of the senses, limited usually to conventions of good and bad, purgatory, heaven, hungry ghosts, angels. But rising and falling in the heat of Bourbon Street, the golden quicksilver beyond pervades all. The brick and mortar of the buildings Dark windows above the bars, alleys hidden in shadow, and smiling faces glowing with drunkenness. As a crowd milled through the spacious public square, jugglers, street musicians, tarot readers, and magicians welcomed the infinite. Present the next day for our marriage, the judges' chambers, a place and a man of social law. Unlike a church where the deeper spiritual realms are subdued by ritual, they were all free to witness and approve of our exchange of rings, a completely open celebration in the space of eternity. Thank you. <clears throat> to Genevieve, my wife. Your father drank a quart of vodka a day. Now he lives near an Egyptian pyramid. And in your dream, he held a knife that fell like a siren scream and combination cut of light and darkness engulfing each other. 
A police car wailed by between buildings, responding to an emergency or just fuckers with too much power. We woke and saw each other in the darkness. You stood and turned on the light. A water glass shattered on the floor. I heard you scream and saw terror in your eyes, your body clenched and trembling. In Arl, we could see how much the sun exposed each needle of the cypress trees, that many generations of them have sprouted since Van Gogh. Small birds circled overhead. We walked along the river, away from stores that had postcards of his paintings, down narrow cobblestones, passing drunken locals. Blue sky contained between red-roofed brick ghettos. The sun flickered above a blue shirt, rippling on a line between windows in walls with relieved demons, bulbous eyes, and carnivorous teeth. May 25th, 1996, our first wedding anniversary. We kept the hotel window open, lulled to sleep by chirping birds, buried within branches, swept by a mistral wind. Thank you. <clears throat> Surrounded by celestial wheels. <clears throat> Karmic psychological wheels turn continually. Me, you, eternity, self, poet, money starved, depressed, high, around and around until confusion at the verge of paranoid panic finally peaks. And the order of ego-defined senses becomes chaotic. And the instant insanity proves insufficient, psychology and the senses merge. The squeak of an opening door occurs from the hinges and the mind simultaneously into celestial wheels of dualism. And the reference point for the senses becomes seeing you, my love. Self-lost, compassion enters. It's simple. All the rest follows. Thanks so much.